And it is time. It is time to get this going. I have been dreaming this particular event up for a long time, you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to Breakthroughs, where we have a mission to enjoy the time, energy, money, and resources to generously take care of ourselves and everyone we love and serve. My name is Laura DeFranco and I'm the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we are waking the world up to what's possible. And I am so honored and excited to be here with all of you guys today. You guys, healers, I love you. We devote our lives to learning our craft and our art, but we don't always learn what it takes to thrive. It's time to serve from the overflow, to leave a ripple from a place of authentic abundance, health and wealth. That is the kind of breakthrough I want for you today and every day. So here today to help us with this mission and this very first episode of Breakthroughs is our very special guest, Atlantis Wolf. She is a shaman, a firekeeper, a licensed mm -hmm. medical massage therapist, and part of her secret is connecting to spiritual realms using breathwork, drumming, and fire ceremonies. Atlantis is the dragon medicine woman. Atlantis, welcome to the show. Thank you, Laura. I'm so glad to be here and kicking off the inaugural run. I wish I had champagne. I would just knock it on the side of something. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds like a great idea. Um, anybody watch Emily in Paris on Netflix, how they the champagne brand is the only reason they made the champagne was to spray it on people. Perfect. Anyone see that? Yeah, like I need the <laughs> champagne. We're just going to spray it on each other, girl. I love it. Okay. <laughs> So um, welcome everybody here who's joined us today. I'm so incredibly grateful for the amazing community of brave healers who are trailblazing this revolution with me. Thank you so much. Um, I am going to get ready to introduce Atlantis to you. And then as questions come up today about what she's talking about, um, Zoomers, please go ahead and type them in the chat. Uh, welcome, Lisa Karasek. Lisa, thank you so much for being here and really managing the community, managing our chat today and helping people feel, uh, have a good time and feel comfortable and feel seen and heard from that chat. You guys type your questions in. We're going to be ready for them. And then after a little Q&A, we're going to have the open mic portion of the show. And I'm super excited about adding this aspect to this particular event. I have some pretty awesome powerhouses in the house today who will um, knock your socks off, get ready. And Atlantis is also going to guide us during her hour through an amazing experience today, you guys. There are so many gifts coming in the next couple of hours, okay? So one last thing. If you're here to participate in the open mic, I want you to do something very important right this minute, okay? I need you to go over to the chat. I need you to change the everyone bar to my name and click it to me, change it to me. And I want you to type your full name, first and last name in all capital letters in that chat, okay? Chris, you didn't wait for me to get that whole thing out. Okay, I got a couple. Okay, good. He was on it. He was fast. Fantastic. So, and you have about 30 more seconds to do that if you want to be a part of the open mic today. Do, 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 do. 30 seconds, you guys. Who else is going to be in? Okay, there's limited spots today. We've got two more. We got two more options. Are you there? Okay, we got one more option. Who else wants to read? All right, open mic is now closed. Do not type any more to me privately. Go back to the chat, change it to everyone, because I don't want to get all your private messages after this, right? So change it to everyone right now, and then you can ask your questions, and you can chat with each other, and you can say, oh my God, isn't Atlantis awesome when she starts to speak today? Um, and I can't wait to get to the open mic later, okay? And then, of course, you guys don't even know what order you're in, so stay tuned. 
Atlantis. Yes. It's been an incredible honor to know you. And just your loving presence for me personally has been transformational. Hmm. The words that you've spoken to me, the kindness that you've showed me, the complete lack of judgment on my crazy ass that I am <laughs> like most of the time. And I just, I love you. And I'm so super happy to have you here and to let people have a taste of who you are and also a little bit of what you're going to be doing at our retreat in April. Like, oh my God, I'm so excited. So you call yourself the dragon medicine woman. Tell me about that. Uh, first of all, I can tell that you are reading my mind because I have dedicated 2023 to receiving. So I was not expecting all of that. So I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm trying to take it in. So I'm just as happy to know you and to be part of your life and to be allowed. And for the people who are on the call who don't know, Laura DeFranco was the single person who created a sacred space for me in a writer's workshop to actually say out loud to people, it was on Zoom, but it still was scary as all hell, that I see spirits and see people who are mermaids and aliens and that all of the, and dragons and galactic beings. And I basically just had this like stream of consciousness is like blah, 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 of all these words uh in her workshop which is without a doubt life-changing please sign up for everything that she does because it will change your life all you have to do is do everything that laura tells you to do which i did and it will fall into place so i want people to know that because I always have come from a tradition where you honor your lineage and honor your teachers and I want to honor Laura, because without that moment, yes, I was ripe. Yes, I was ready. Yes, I started to think about saying things out loud, like I'm the dragon medicine woman. But until that moment, I hadn't said it for real out loud. So dragon medicine is definitely the most unusual medicine that I bring to the table. Dragons and angels are the two beings in the universe who were created before duality. So the duality of the soul and the ego being separate from each other, that happened in the universe. And you could go talk to Matthias de Stefano on Gaia TV. You can Google this. I'm not here to tell you that part of the history. I'm here to say dragons were part of those initial beings when the universe formed. So they are sovereign, they're whole. They don't have any sort of ego agenda. They are completely connected their soul and their ego are one place and they come in that aligned cosmic place. So if you wanna work with dragons, which I did not do absolutely nothing because I was having a meditation and a dragon came in, wrapped itself around my mom who was dying and my dad. And I thought, well, that's it. I can't fight a dragon, so I give up. I'm just gonna let my dad take my mom and keep her from me while she was dying and I give up because I can't do that. And then after she died, there was one incident where one dragon came through me when I was not surprisingly standing in my own power and telling my dad that I'm allowed to ask questions and I'm allowed to know what's going to happen to me and happen to my kids on a phone call. And it was a physical experience of something birthing from my sacrum, very much like a kundalini. They talk about that serpent that is coiled around your sacrum, the bottom of your spine and yoga. They talk about the kundalini, very much like that feeling of something that had just had it and said, you know what, I'm done. And it coiled, it was this uncoiling and it came out of my mouth and I was clear and I was loud for the first time in my life because I spent my childhood quite silent. And I was logical. Everything I said was not emotional. It wasn't personal. It was like, you jerk, you this. It just came out complete and hot and has been around me ever since. So the reason why I say that is because people say, I want to work with dragon medicine. And I say, tough shit, because you have to be called. It is a path of direct revelation. They have to call to you, and then you surrender to them 
And then you'll start to see dragons in clouds and dragons in puddles and dragons in landscapes. And then if you're like me and you're all in and you say, awesome, you'll be invited to an international dragon meditation group who gets together every two weeks and meditates for planetary service. And that's as corny as it sounds, what I actually find the greatest joy in, in living. So there's a little bit of that. My firstborn was year of the dragon. Awesome. So there's that little tiny tidbit. I love it. Um, I, I love that you're talking about this and you'll have to look at the chat for some of the comments that are coming through about dragons. Thank you for being brave and moving through that and being brave enough to like say it out loud for the first few times and then but also to share the process that you went through literally there's so many of you that i've met who have come out yeah so to speak in terms of your healing gifts and powers and i'm so proud that you're you're doing that because that is what we're doing around here we are waking mm -hmm. the world up to what's possible that's part of it and can't be silent to do that. No, um, and yeah. it's terrifying. It is legitimately terrifying. It, there, there is no doubt that I know, and I was there, and I was diminished. I mean, the first time I said that, I was, you know, over forty. So, it, it's it is kind of this bubble that comes out where you see and hear and have a different experience than other people. But I'll tell you right now that I feel completely called to normalize all these experiences for the sole purpose of giving other people permission to say, I see spirits too, I hear, I'm guided by angels, I, you know, I see a purple light every time I think of my mom. I mean, people have told me stuff and I'm like, I, I don't just me too, although I have had like legitimately a shamanic buffet of experiences, but more it's in my vibration. So I could just look at them and smile and say, that's great. Do you want to do that some more? Because I can show you how to really lean into that. And then it becomes accepted and acknowledged and fun. And that's what my greatest hope is, is that people see it as this wonderful curiosity. Like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I was connected to sacred geometry or, you know, wolves or something cool. So, <laughs> yeah, it's normal. So... I hear you talk about the connection between the quantum field and mm -hmm. the state of overflow. Can you mm -hmm. talk more about that? Yes. So in the same way that I was talking about how dragons are uh, sovereign and whole, like they're, they're whole, the quantum field is a place that exists that um, I think of it as sort of the soup that we all came from. So if you can imagine that there's 100,000 little points of gold light, that's the quantum field. And one by one, those lights come down and they take on a casing or a body or an earth suit. And they come down here to do different things. I like to think of it as just this enormous book that's a checklist. And they want to experience everything that's possible for a human being to experience everything good bad and different i want to be a murderer a midwife you name it i want to make sure that my book is full so i can go back to the quantum field and tell all my friends you'll never believe what i did in this lifetime but for us we can get back there by letting go of the awareness that we have here so if you move to a place where you're gently letting go of your awareness that you're in the universe on a planet in a country, in speaking a particular language, you're going to move closer and closer and closer to your heart because that's where that spark, that gold spark, that soul, that piece of infinity lives is inside of your heart. And when you get there, that's where you ask for what you want. Because when you're there, you don't say things like, I want a Tesla because it doesn't even occur to you. I'm not saying it wouldn't be cool to take that gold spark around in a Tesla. It's just that it's deeper than that. And so that's the place where you find yourself in a more cosmic connection to what is abundance. And abundance is more about bring me a river of abundance that flows through me and fills me up to overflow 
so that my overflowing cup can fill the cup of all those around me 10 times over. That is how the universe works. It wants to help all. It wants to move into that alignment. So when you're moving into the piece of you that is aligned, that little gold spark, you are reconnecting to the quantum field and you can ask for anything that you want because you're coming to it from your heart. Girl, I'm living in golden sparkles like every day, but how do I know that I'm there? Like, I need you to go practical for us for just sure. a minute. Like, how, what's the feeling like? Like, and how do I know? Can I be super duper crystal clear that I'm there? Well, I mean, your body's in homeostasis. So you're always trying to increase, you know, abundance is a river, it's flowing. So it's never going to stop. There's not a there's not an end point. It's not like I have the things that I want. It's more like I have a feeling of abundance. So I feel like I could give everything away, because I feel it all coming in me. You don't really move to a plate of static. So if you're in motion, if you're creating, if you're getting money and giving money, if you are getting opportunities to help people and taking them and helping people, that's the same thing. That's that circulation of energy that's moving through you. So if you are circulating your gifts and your energy and your money and everything, you're there, you've got it. So if you're holding on to it, the, the easiest way to think of it is if your mindset is this, I have to hold on to it. It's going to go. That's not abundance. Abundance is let me be the riverbed so that it will flow right through me and I will just direct it. Oh, look, they need help. Let me direct it over there. Oh, they need $500 to stay in school. I'll direct it over there. Okay. What else needs to happen? Continue the flow, flow and go. Yeah, flow and go. I'm going to ask our participants today to type in the chat. Is there a place in your body you feel this? And I don't want Atlantis to answer it yet. When do you feel what she's talking about? And if you do, give us an idea of where that is in you, if that makes sense to you. I'll just, we'll watch that chat here in a minute and see what comes up with that. Um, I love this topic. Uh, okay. Another part of your magic is that you help people connect with their intuition and reclaim their personal power. What matters to you the most about that topic? Um, I think for me, um, I have a belief that I can guide people down the path that I've already been. So because I was diminished and silent and crushed for so long in my life and reclaimed the power to be myself, to be vocal, to be, you know, let's be honest, a little weird and a little out there. Um, I think that it's important to me because I know what it's like to feel the other side of it. I know what it's like to feel me and to feel like at any moment, any cliff that comes my way, I'll just spread my wings and soar to the next mountain, the next precipice, there's, there's really nothing I fear at this point, because everything that I could possibly fear has happened and I worked through it. So it's important to me because I see people, I see them so well, the intuitive part helps me really see people's shadow and light. And so when I see someone who just has this little binding of fear, and if they could just look at that, and they themselves take it off, they could also spread their wings, open their heart, take the next step. So it's personal. It's just personal because I've been there and I know how it, you do this to yourself. And I know how easy it is when one person gives you permission to say what you're afraid of out loud. What's keeping you from personal power? Who are you not allowed to criticize? What would you say to them if you could criticize them? Say it to me. Say it to me first so that you can feel how your body just changed and you ballooned into more of yourself. And so I see that as the easiest way to help the whole planet is to show each of us that we can open up and just blossom one at a time. Oh, man, I want to rewind you for a minute into, you know, who are you? Oh, this is a tough question. Who are you? What, what did you say? Not willing to criticize? 
who are you not able to criticize? That's not who's able taking to. that's who's taking your personal power. That's who you're giving it away to. And personal power is about you know yourself, you have figured out yourself and you're giving yourself permission to be yourself. And anyone who criticizes you, even if it's something small, like they say, I can't believe you're going to a drum circle. That's so stupid. If you give them any credence whatsoever, if you have a thought that maybe you don't want to go to that drum circle you've been waiting to go to for a month, that is a moment for you to pause and realize, oh, shit, I am giving them the power to change my passion, my joy, my abundance. I have to look at that whole relationship. Why am I letting them do that? If they're doing that about something I love, are they doing it about other stuff too? So it's introspection. It just leads you on that path of introspection and allows you to move. I mean, this is a path of direct revelation. Everything that's intuitive, nobody could tell you, oh, you have a harpy eagle as a power animal. No, you have to say, let's do a meditation. You tell me what you see. Now, luckily I can see. So if they say, oh, it's like a phoenix bursting, I'm like, okay, well, what else do you see? You know, I, I know when people are lying and I know when it, their ego really wants them to see something big, but I wouldn't say that. I would say like, well, let's look again. There's many power animals. Let's see if that's the one that really wants to work with you right now. But it's direct revelation. I'm not telling you anything. I'm saying, how does this resonate with you? If you say, oh, damn it. I can't believe you can actually see that about me. Great. Now we're winning and we have something to have a conversation about. <laughs> But if it little, doesn't resonate, don't take it in, people. Like I, I had a little don't. resistance over the boa constrictor that day, just saying. I don't, I don't know about that one, but I have allowed that into my life a little bit, those big snakes. There's three. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you guys, um, when we asked the question a few minutes ago, thank you for typing in the chat. You're feeling it in your heart, says Lisa. And Pam said heart and stomach. Chris says heart and solar plexus. Um, Millie says, for me, when I see something that I want or want to help someone that needs help, I feel it all over my body. And it's almost like there's a tug to help. I like that, Millie. Mm -hmm. um, Annie says, a, a full body kind of whoosh, a kind of liquid love. I like that one. Too. I love these feels ones, you guys. Um, a tug to just buy it. It's already yours. Yeah, I love that. Is that about the Tesla, Millie? No, it's not about the Tesla. I know, I'm teasing you. Um, Bradford says, <clears throat> tingles, mostly on the top of my head when I'm in alignment with universal truth. Yes. So, Buffalo, nice. Um, we've got some spirit animals landing in the chat as we speak. Um, all right, so one of the cool things that we're going to be able to taste in a much bigger way at the retreat is your use of ceremonial fire mm -hmm. and you use this to help us connect to help us release tell me more about how you use this as a modality so um out of the elements so the the elements are water earth fire and air and they go through very similar like a birth process so fire is the element of transformation like the dragons i didn't pick it it picked me i'm just a very um fiery person and all that implies but um the element of fire is specifically about transformation so wood does not become fire to nothing it's it's the energy in the wood that tastes the fire that changes into heat and radiant energy as you could see as light and into smoke and sometimes into embers and all different kinds of things so for me i love working with fire because it is about transformation it is a visual we're so visual it's such a beautiful visual way to change something in this case something you're afraid of and morph it into something else and send the fear to something that's bigger than you which could be god or spirit or the universe or the ghost of elvis i don't really know what people think is bigger than them but whatever it is is great and then to feel what it's like when that's not in your body or in your energy field and the reason why is because most people are afraid of fire because fire burns. And so I like to teach people, 
Well, sure, but it's burning up something that doesn't serve you, the dead wood, the stuff that you don't need anymore. It's transforming that into more of a naked source love. And now you can feel what it's like in your life and in your body without that fear. So the magic is that it gives you a moment to release physical pain, body pain, mental pain, emotional, spiritual anguish, and it, it transforms it into something else that comes back to you as love. And so the part that you released it out of, somewhere in your body, somewhere in your field, we have to fill that back in because it was there. It was energy. It was real. It was a part of you walking around the world. So I'm always careful to fill it back in with love and let your body kind of like the way that mushrooms talk to everything underground and they're the like communicators, your body is going to recommunicate with itself on that cellular level. And you want to make sure it's reattaching all of those things with love. And that's what I work on. Mm, naked source love. Yeah. yeah. I had to type that one in the chat. I just needed to actually type those words, naked source. I'm going to use that in a blog, I think, next week. I think that will be good. Maybe the title will be naked source love. Sure. Um, I've been learning a lot about the elements and the cycle. So where fire sits in a cycle. Mm -hmm. And I love learning about that. And you already talked about it, in, about the flow. Mm -hmm. And if you're getting stagnant in any one of those places that's a problem you want everything to keep feeding they each feed each other and they keep moving in that cycle it's been really fascinating education so i love hearing you talk about the way you talk about fire for that yeah. reason and it's also that's the easiest way to know if you're stuck like if you're sick if you're diseased if you're heading somewhere it's because you can't create you can't create anything you can't create a cup of tea a good shower like um, it doesn't have to be like a poem or a piece of art but if you are creating, if the that naked source love is moving through you, it's creating because that's what it does. It creates constantly. Life is constantly being created. That birth and death cycle is all creation. You're creating death. You're creating birth. You're creating new life. And where we get stuck, if, if you know someone who's been through depression or anxiety or a trauma, the first thing that happens, they, they shut down. They can't create, they can't create a good meal for themselves. They can't create, you know, a, a moment. Um, and that's when you know that they're in trouble. When people are creating, they're okay, they're going to get through it. There's hope is alive. Engines are the pistons are firing. But if not, they're in real trouble and they need someone to reach out to them and say, what, what do you need that you're not getting? You know, let's walk you out into the sunshine and talk about it. Mm, nice. So I'm going to um, have you tell everyone a little bit about yourself here and all of the things that you're up to, but get ready, you guys, because in a few minutes, Atlantis is going to actually lead us in an exercise. And I've been looking forward to this ever since we booked our call for today. <laughs> um, so get ready for that. But um, I know that you, well, you do a lot. You do medical massage, you run retreats, you do medicine walks, you do virtual coaching and facilitate breathwork sessions. What else do you want us to know about your, what you offer? Uh oh, did we lose you, Alanis? <laughs> Lisa, can you unmute? Is she frozen, you guys? I believe she's frozen. Okay, Alanis is frozen. So <laughs> we'll wait for her to come back and I will say a little bit more about that. She has been doing incredible work in person up in the Cleveland area, you guys. And so Atlantis's website is in the chat and we'll put it on the live stream for everybody watching. She'll probably come join us back any second, Lisa. So watch that waiting room. And she works virtually and in person, but the breathwork sessions are amazing transformational sessions. Um, she talked about fire ceremony, but you know, obviously a fire ceremony is a big deal, especially when it's like a big ass bonfire. And I've been to a couple of these kinds of events where that is the event. Either there's a fire ceremony or there's um, fire walking. If you have done 
either of those, would you type in the chat right now that you've been there, done that? I'm just curious how many of you have either been to a fire ceremony or have done fire walking. And you can tell me like which one you've done in the chat. Um, you did walk on coals. Awesome. Fire walker in the house. Angela's done it. Um, fair, fire ceremony for Bradford. Fire ceremonies, Chris. Awesome, you guys. I did my first fire walk in Teotihuacan, Mexico last year in January when we went with Stephanie Urbina Jones and Jeremy Pager. They're going to be on the show January 27th. You guys do not want to miss that show. And I had my first you know, listen, I, in my 20s, I was on the Tony Robbins stage breaking boards, y'all. Like, who who did, yeah, right? Like, what? You know, and I there could have been the fire walk with him, but I was, oh my gosh, I was such a fan, like, in my 20s. And then I became a third degree black belt and breaking boards became, like, something that I did every week. But the fire walking was, like, a thing for me. I'm like, oh, am I really going to do this, you know? Um, but in the careful guidance of Jeremy and um, the helpers that he had at that retreat that we did, it was an incredible experience. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. It's pretty amazing. So um, what kinds of things were you guys able to release in the fire ceremony give me a sentence bradford i'm calling you out um scott holmes is in the house hey i didn't see you sneak in here what what was the 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 sentence you want to share about that transformation make it easy on me and it looks like atlantis is back in here now so i'll grab her up back to the screen while you guys are typing okay Oh, Millie, I love that. Doubt, pain, anger. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Atlantis, we're so oh, glad you're Eddie. back. <laughs> so, so remember your tech issues? They cut <laughs> the internet to my building. Oh, no. <laughs> they're working. There's a new person moving in and they're working on the building. So well, I filled I the space. through my like hotspot. Okay, you're awesome. Um, uh, I was so just, fingers crossed. <laughs> I was just asking people in the chat um, who had experienced a fire ceremony or fire walking and what some of their takeaways were. So we were just kind of chatting about that. But can you just spend a minute telling us anything else you want us to know about your offerings? I, I listed most of the things that you're up to. What's what's hot right now for you? Uh, let's see. What's hot right now is I'm doing shamanic breath work with a co-creator friend of mine and we're doing shamanic breathwork ceremonies with a cacao ceremony follow-up and we're doing that sort of everywhere that we have friends so right now that's in cleveland and toronto i'm going to be driving out to sedona and stopping at a couple of places we have friends in boston so doing a shamanic breathwork is like a two-hour ceremony where there's drumming there's activating music you breathe in a circular connected way there's an enormous experience that is the great mystery because everyone has an experience, but they can't explain it. And then there is art processing. So you process and embody what you saw, heard, felt, experienced. And then after that, we take a break and make cacao. Cacao is a heart opener. So the way that we were talking about releasing the energy, then the cacao helps to keep your heart open and fill that back in with love. And we dance and sort of reconnect our body in a different way. So that's huge doing the shamanic breath work. I call it the dragon medicine tour because mm -hmm. I pretty much will take it anywhere I can take a speaker I and my co-creator. So that's up. I still do medical massage. I still do shamanic coaching. I still do one-on-one -on -one shamanic breath work sessions and mini retreats where you come here and I, do everything, all my magic. So we go hike in the woods for a medicine walk. We do a shamanic breathwork session. We do a medical massage session, go out to dinner, do some coaching, and then wrap you up and put you to bed and say, God bless. See you <laughs> in another couple months. So nice. the, the fire, um, I've done fire walking 15 or 20 times. And the, this fire ceremony is about releasing. This is a mini one that we're going to do but also in Sedona, it's releasing fear. 
release fear so you can let more love in. It's sort of, you know, fear is like this inhale, inhale, inhale. We have all these fears that we accumulate and we forget we have to breathe all of them out because we accumulate them. It's like there's no good place for us to release our fears. So they just start hanging on us and hanging around us. And all of a sudden we have this baggage of this bag of fears that we don't talk about and we get more embarrassed about. And it could be anything, it's, it's always very personal. But the ceremony is 100 of us in a circle singing the fire song with drumming and being able to release that into the fire, which is itself its own shamanic journey. Staring into fire is an old way that people used to journey. They would make a fire, stare into the fire, move into that trance-like shamanic journey state. It's called scurrying, not scuttling, but like a scurrying. You could do it with stones as well. And it will make you move. It won't really make you do anything. It will give you the opportunity to move into that trance-like state so that you can really just sit with the fear. What's it teaching you? What is it done teaching you? What is the story without the fear sitting on top of it? So we're going to do that. Okay, so we have about 15 minutes to Great. experience your gifts today, and it is all you. Wonderful. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to do is ask if this is now too loud. It, so you guys, just a couple of seconds on this. Um, everyone has control of their own volume today. Yeah. She, she can't change it for everybody. So if you need to adjust your own volume, go for it. Okay. But Atlantis, it sounds good because I can hear it without you talking. So your audio okay. sounds perfect. Yeah. And is this too loud? That sounds perfect. Great. All right. Then we are all set. So <laughs> first thing is <clears throat> hopefully everybody is comfortable and allowing themselves to breathe. So if you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth just for a moment, just sort of bring in what you need and breathe out what you don't need. And do it again with your focus on the exhale. Just bring in what you need and let go of what you don't need. And for the last one, bring in love and breathe out love. So I'm going to use I'm going to start out by using this rattle. This is one that my friend Robert Salem made. It has a turtle rattle on one side and it has a drum beater on the other. There's a little abalone shell. There's a little bit of wolf fur, which is one of my power animals and a little bit of buffalo fur, which is also one of my power animals. So just for a moment, close your eyes and bring yourself to this moment. Allow everything outside of your room to disappear. Be here with your heartbeat, your skin, and your bones, and feel your own body for one moment. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And on the next breath, open your mouth and give it a sound. Breathe in through your nose and then give it a sound. And just one more time, breathe in through your nose and give it a sound. So open your eyes. And as you open your eyes, feel your body and see what your body feels like right now. Some people were talking about where they could feel abundance in their body and they could feel different things. So go back and do a body scan. See if there's anything that is stuck. Is there anywhere in your body that you don't feel love flowing easily through. 
give all your love and attention to that. You don't have to name it. You could just give it your love and attention. Swirl around it. Hold on to it. And then open your eyes and look into the flame. We're going to use our little baby fire here, which is just as sacred. Every drop of love is as sacred as the ocean of love. And give yourself a moment to stare into the flame and mine your whole body. Go into your whole body and see if there's any little pieces that are also stuck. We're going to bring those like a snowball into that place that you already found that feels a little stuck and we're going to move all of that. But at the moment, just stare into the fire. Calm down into your heart, out of your head. And soften your gaze. Soften your eyes. Soften your jaw. accumulate the energy around you because there are helpers at this moment trying to blow wind into your sails and bring a gentle nudging energy allow yourself to feel them around you they may be animals they may be your ancestors they may be star beings or they may be the elements themselves you may feel the element of fire at your back. You may feel a soft hand. You may hear a soft word. You may feel it on your cheek. You may just hear it and it may hear blood. It may sound different than something you've heard before. Maybe it's just a message of encouragement. Go ahead and drop it in. Just take that one step. Feeling all the forces that are supporting you. Allow yourself to take that energy and move it into your cupped hands. Put one or two hands out in front of you and give yourself time to move that part that's stuck into the palm of your hands. Now that you've allowed it to move to your cupped hands, move it up to the flame. Give it to the flame as if you were giving it a tremendous gift. What doesn't serve you anymore is food for something else in the universe. Everything has an antithesis and everything is in balance. What is heavy to you is light to something else. Allow yourself to give this energetically into the flame. This fear, this thing that you hope no one will ever know about you. This deep part that you keep hidden away. You don't have to tell us. You don't have to do anything other than give it over to the fire as if it was a beautiful gift. All the fear, all the cellular energy, put it into the fire and let it go knowing it's leaving you for your highest and best purpose and on the count of three 
your fear is going to be transformed in one, two, three. And now go back, scan your body again, move your body, let it flow, let it move around, lift up your shoulders, drop them down, shake out your legs, shake out your hands, shake out your arms, and see how it feels now. Give yourself a moment to breathe into your new body. Just breathe in. Breathe out, fill it in, feel it flow, make it higher, make it brighter, bring it in, bring it in. And now close your eyes. Feel your body again, feel the lightness, feel the air that's taking up more music, more room. Come inside and feel how your heart has expanded in that single breath with your intention and is filling back up with endless, infinite, and unconditional love. Thank you for listening. I'm Atlantis Wolf, and I believe in you. Oh, I would like one of those wind chimes, please. What, <laughs> what instrument is that? That is... A Japanese wind chime. It's uh, so beautiful. They're all centered. It's Koshi, K-O-S-H-I, uh, and they're each for different elements. So it is just a matter of setting the intention, but I find that this is the sound that helps people reconnect to their heart after releasing something that inevitably was more in their head. And you're, you know, you're using, you're using your hands. The reason why I use the hands is because your hands are actually connected to your heart. If you extended your arm, they would be in the same heart chakra, your hands. When you're putting your hands on people, you're putting your heart on them. When you're putting your hands on yourself, you're creating a circle of love. So it's important to move into love, to move whatever is afraid, whatever is tight into love, and then let it go. Uh, please take a look at the chat Atlantis for all of the beautiful thank yous. <laughs> I forgot guys, about that. <laughs> you guys, that was pretty awesome. Um, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, you're gonna make a dragon blush. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna be doing a much more in depth workshop for us at the Brave Healer Writers Retreat is this is in April, you guys in Sedona from the fourth to the eighth. And um, I'm honestly so excited about this piece of our agenda. It's I mean, if you guys thought that was powerful today, imagine just imagine and I'm gonna let Atlantis just briefly tell us a little tease about what that might look like. So I am going to take 20 people as a wolf pack because that's as many people as I can energetically hold. But if you go to atlantiswolf.com forward slash events, the Brave Healer Retreat, there's an affiliate link. It's my special link. If you sign up there and send me a message, you will get a pre-retreat Zoom call with me so we can set the intention, set our sacred container and come in together as a unified ball of source love. And then while we're at the retreat, I'm gonna offer those 40 people a, a free, this is no extra cost. This is just as a gift, my gift to Brave Healer Productions. Yeah, I was gonna back you up for just a second to let you yeah. all know that this is extra and this is get, these are gifts. And I um, asked Atlantis that, you know, if she wanted to share about this, like what would she like to do? And she's telling you these gifts. Yeah. So this is extra y'all. This is extra free. Yeah. You just have to use my link so I know that what what 20 people are going to be in this group. Um, so it'll, there'll be a pre retreat zoom call to set our intentions, get our container together while we're there. We're going to do drumming 
meditations at sunrise at a special place called bliss rock because i've been to mago a lot uh, there's a beautiful place to see the sunrise so there's a, a free sunrise drumming then there's also a one a dedicated it's a labyrinth drumming, but it's at the infinity labyrinths at Mago. They have two labyrinths that are like, they look like they're kissing. So you could go from one to the other. So it's like the infinity symbol. We're going to do, uh, the me and the, the 20 wolf pack people will do a special infinity labyrinth meditation. And I'm not going to tell you too much about that other than <laughs> it'll be wicked cool. Yeah. The fire ceremony is for everybody, but clicking on my link and telling me I want to be part of your 20 in the wolf pack. We'll get you all those free extras. Yeah, totally amazing. Thank you so much for just being willing to be a presenter, first of all, but then to offer something like that is pretty freaking cool. So I appreciate you. Um, so you guys, a couple of us, it's working and a couple of you, mm -hmm. it's not working. So I'm not really sure mm -hmm. why. Like yeah. I can click on that link. Try another browser, y'all, please. And then we will figure it out. So um, Atlantis, yeah. what's your email if they want to just email you and get the info? Come on now. You know it's dragonmedicinewoman at gmail.com. <laughs> okay, there you go, you guys. So Lisa, <laughs> do me a favor and type that in for Atlantis, her email, dragonmedicinewoman at gmail.com. If, if the link isn't working for you, send mm -hmm. Atlantis a quick email and she'll make sure that you get you know, I'll take you, care of you what you need. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, somebody wanted to ask if they can bring their own personal drums. Yes, of course. Absolutely. But you can't drum over me. There'll be a place where I'm leading everyone. But um, the best thing to do is to receive because this retreat is about receiving the medicine. Drum circles are different than drumming ceremonies. So in the drum ceremony, it's about receiving in a drum circle. That's where everyone brings a drum and we all move into a uh, syncopation that's not what i'm offering okay that's good different. good clarification for our healers who are used to the drums and doing the things so thank you for that um so you guys i hope you'll start planning now because atlantis is only one of multiple master healers and teachers who will be with us kyle cease the comedian, transformational coach, documentary star, New York Times bestseller is uh, going to be doing his Evolving Out Loud workshop for us at the retreat. Um, Stephanie and Jeremy are going to meet next month on the 27th for the Breakthrough Show, and they're going to be doing Sacred Journey Breathwork. OMG, I could go on and on about how <laughs> amazing any one of our presenters is. Like yeah. any one of the people showing up is going to be worth your price of admission. Plus Mago um, Atlantis will tell you is freaking magical. And so is Sedona. So yes. <laughs> it, it totally is. I mean, just just being at Mago with all the vortexes, it's 174 acres. It used to be a hippie commune. It's west <laughs> of Sedona. It's out in Coconino National Forest. It's like just being there and laying on the ground is a retreat. Um, so Lisa does have the writer's retreat link, but that one is broken. Um, I know, d don't laugh at me, you guys. So Lisa, don't use that one. Please use the Facebook for now. Y'all, my website's Brave Healer Productions website is going through a massive overhaul. It's There's no good time to correct your website, right? I have so many active links and things going on. But if you go to the Facebook events, you'll be able to see about the retreat. And then a couple of days in the new year, all of my links will be working again, I promise, okay? Um, can't wait to reveal the new website to you guys. Like, this has been long overdue. So, yeah, if, you know, broken links, whatever, just email me and, like, we'll, we'll set you up. Um, Atlantis, uh, well, let me ask Lisa. Lisa, we have time for two very quick questions. Were there any? Oh, there were two. Go figure. Okay. Can you <laughs> just read them to Atlantis? And Atlantis, I need you to be a little brief on the answers, okay? Yep. All right. So I didn't write down the whole question. I kind of synopsed. So the person who asked may want to chime in. But Milagros asked, how does work on bypassing doubts? Um, I didn't write down the whole question. I'm sorry. And then Nayan Chara, I'm sorry if I'm killing your names. <laughs> how to know when it's time to let go tangibly, like, like with a job. Always. Say it's that. Always. My answer is always, it's always time to let go of things that don't serve you. 
That's as short as answer as I can come up with. If you're mm -hmm. thinking you might want to give up the job, give up the job. Usually the answer is right in front of your face. If you're asking the question, you already know the answer. I feel, I feel like that's part of what you just said. It's like, I know that in my own self, if I have to go outside of myself and ask somebody, it that's always the answer. It's like, oh yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah, um, you just don't wanna, you're, it, the, the battle, the battle is your head and your heart. And what you say is the actual, like you're in the trenches. So whatever you say, that's your reality. So if you say it's time to go, it is time to go. Um, Lisa, did you say the first question already? Can you repeat it if you did? Um, I wrote down a question. Milagros has her hands raised. Um, how, it was something about working on bypassing doubts. If she I have it. Okay, Millie, I need you to be pretty brief, okay? Just okay. Re so read your does, question. Okay, how does one work on bypassing those doubts that are seeded by others? Personally, I let go of certain people and I really felt little to no pain. So Alanis, what is, what is, what would you suggest to people? I mean, it's about emotional boundaries. If you let people seed things inside of you, it's, it's about an introspection, but you can reach out to me and we could do a connection call to talk about that more. So just send me an email and we'll set up a time to talk about it. Super awesome. Dragonmedicinewoman at gmail.com. Um, the links that I'm clicking on from our chat are all working. So, you know, not sure somebody's blocking somebody and they're clicking ability today, but um, we got you. I'll put them back on the page in the live stream on Brave Healer Productions Facebook page for you guys. And I'm inviting any of our Zoomers today to go back to the live stream and put your website, put your hello, put your, hey, I attended today and here's how you can reach me. Cause I see you guys, um, I see you Brave Healer authors today. Thank you for being here. If you've written in a Brave Healer Productions book, if you're leading a book project, um, Angela Rohr is going to be leading an incredible project called Bites of Light. Pamela Pine is about to publish Stop the silence, OMG, you guys. Powerful, powerful, brave words coming. Um, Karen Scott is in the house. She wrote a beautiful, brave chapter in Shaman Heart. Um, I'm amazed at myself that I can remember all these names right now. Okay, not your names, but the book names that are associated with your faces. Like We have over 600 authors in the community now, y'all. And so it is half a miracle if I remember all the different books and the titles and who was in them. But um, the gratitude is real and it's big and um, my mission is real and big and it's because of all of you who have come into my world. So thank you so, so much. And I'll um, have I one last follow up there. Uh, Chris LeBaron, um, you're talking about a facility wanting ceremonies. I don't have your contact info. Can you email me, please? Yes, indeed. I'd be delighted. I'm Thank I'm you. Of sending that right now. Yeah, and any, anybody who wants to be connected with Atlantis, also remember that you can just email me as well, and I'll put you together with her. So, and we we're going to be connected somehow, right? You guys all have forever the, the invite <laughs> from breakthroughs and all the things. Um, Atlantis, what's one last message you have for everybody today? I. My last message is put down everything that was made by a person and go out into nature and just lay on the ground and lay in a river and be out in nature because that's where all the answers are. <laughs> nice. I'm a, a nature fan as well. Um, thank you so much for just being here today. Thanks for the beautiful um, gift you gave us with that. I, you know, do you call that a ceremony? Do you call it a ritual? What do you call what you did today? Um, I have a hard time describing what I do, to be totally honest. So I think that the reason why ceremony always works, that is a fire ceremony, what we just did. And the reason why is because I set an intention, I created a sacred container, I brought you in, I guided you to your own path, I asked for help from the spiritual realms, and then brought you back to your body. So for me, all of those steps are required in a ceremony and I don't work any other way that I only work in ceremony and it has to be that whole full circle for me to feel good about sending you back and whole in back into the world. Well, it was beautiful. 
and amazing. And I loved the way that you actually worked that on Zoom today with the, <laughs> with the flame and the instruments. We brainstormed that earlier, but the way that that smoke came at us in the view of the camera was even really cool to me and the sound and everything. So thank you so, Yay. so, so much. And I cannot wait to hug you at the retreat. With a hundred people <laughs> around the fire. Yeah. Okay. So you guys do me a favor real quick and everybody unmute and clap for Atlantis today. Make oh. some noise. Everybody unmute and just give her a little. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm just going to make a necklace. I'll bring it in one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, let's go to the open mic portion of the show. All right, so here we go with that. You all are going to be called in the order that you gave me your beautiful name in the chat earlier. You did have to be here at the show on time to sign up for our open mic list. And I have eight beautiful people who are going to have five minutes to share. Okay, so um, I need everyone to just make sure that you're muted now again. And I cannot wait to hear what you all have to share today. You can share a five minute talk. You can share poetry, you can sing, you can share uh, an instrument, you can tell us a story. Um, it's really up to you. The open mic was a place where I moved through some pretty serious purpose-driven fear. I walked onto that stage shaking like a leaf in the beginning and did it anyway. It was so therapeutic, so transformational for me. I spent a good two years here locally in the DC area mostly with my bus boys um people who you know who you are thank you for being at shows thank you for snapping for me while i shook on the stage um thanks for believing in my ability to get up there and and share words that other people would even want to hear right i've come a really long way and i credit some of my ability to be in front of people from that practice and that beautiful family and community who cheered me on no matter how hard I was shaking. And just, you guys, I wanted to be able to provide you some of that practice, a place, a platform, a, a community, the safe space where you could say, yeah, I think I could do that, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it even if I'm terrified to do it. And I loved how Lannis came on with us early today and she's like, Ooh, I'm feeling it a little bit. I'm like, I feel it every time. It doesn't matter how many times I've done it. It doesn't even matter that this is like my deal today with the show. I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling it. Those beautiful, beautiful butterflies that are just telling you, you are fiercely alive and you are doing something that matters. And that's how I reframe my purpose-driven fear now. I call it purpose-driven fear, you know, no matter how hard I'm shaking. So um, without further ado, so remember, five minutes. This includes talking about yourself. If you want to open up your five minutes with backstory, the clock is ticking. Okay, so whatever you want to share with us today, you're going to have to keep it in your five minute time slot. And I'm going to get my timer out and make sure that I've got it set. If you are still talking at the five minute mark, you're going to hear this. Everyone hear that? Okay, and you're going to be gonged off the show. I'm teasing you guys. All right, but I really do need you to keep it to five, please honor everybody else who has a slot today the very first one up to the microphone and give me a just a quick pause you can unmute when you hear your name but i do want to pin your videos because you're on the show guys okay so first up to the breakthroughs microphone is chris LeBaron. i got you chris i know you didn't like type your whole name the right way but i got you first up so you ready yes i am thank you Okay, all you. Five minutes. Thank you. My name is Chris LeBaron. I am a Reiki master teacher. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I have the distinct privilege of 
being allowed to co-create with some fabulous women. Lisa is one of those. I feel inspired to speak about chakras. I know that there are many pictures out on many websites and books, colors, non-colors, words in my language, words in languages I do not yet speak. There are a lot of different perspectives on that. My perspective is much more simplistic and I invite each of you who wish to participate to um, begin by shaking out your fingers and getting ready for the really difficult work. First, I would like to introduce the, the first chakra. So please find your first chakra. It is the root chakra. Some of you may be sitting on it. Some of, uh, some of you, if you're standing up, it's the one that's closest to the floor. This is where I connect with the physical world. This is me, I am. I am here, I chose into being into this physical world. I am myself, I have my power. I am here, I chose in and I co-create with all life in this physical world. And so as I firmly connect into this physical world and invite in the energies that go along with being in this physical world, Divine Mother, I allow her into my body, into my first chakra. And that allows me to connect finally with my second chakra where I get to feel curious about who I am. Why am I here? What is going on? What is the purpose of my being here? This is where I have the ability to know who I am. Who am I? What am I? And allow that energy to flow and fill my second chakra. And that will move me along into connecting with my third chakra. And now I allow my curiosity to explore and discover what do I want to do here? What am I going to do to discover who I am and why I'm here? I am going to make my decisions and my choices because from my first chakra, that is my being, that is my purpose, that is my right, that is my power. I get to make those choices and I allow those energies to continue to fill up and allow my curiosity to blossom and allow myself to go out into the world and discover this world that I have co-created. And as I enter into the world, I get to choose how I show up for myself, how I show up to the rest of the world, how I want to be, who I want to be, why I want to be. It's about my decision, my choices, my comfort level. And then as I gain that comfort and my curiosity can, keeps me moving forward and allowing myself to be in the flow of this life, the energies continue to build and I continue to invite Divine Mother into me, who I am. And that reaches my fourth chakra. This is where I discover, I have made the decisions, who I am, and oh my goodness, I am fabulous. Look at myself, feel myself, connect with myself. This is where I am. This is the core of me. This is who I am. This is what I have decided to be, who I've decided to be. I am the change I want to experience in this world. And I love me. I accept me for who I am, for who I have chosen to be. And it's okay when I choose to go discover another part of me. And then those energies and that confidence allows me to express who I am. I begin to allow my curiosity to interact with other life. And I seek understanding. I ask questions. I use healthy conversations to inquire about other people, other beings, other life. And the more I practice the healthy conversations, and then they choose to hear me and I express my truth and who I am, I gain wisdom and insight. And this is the energy for my sixth chakra. The more I practice discovering, expressing, and understanding, the more I become wise, insightful. And because I practice this, it becomes a desire and I allow the energies to reach my seventh chakra and I connect with divine. And the more I practice this, I feel in alignment with me, myself, who I am, who I choose to be. And then that brings me into alignment with divinity and mother earth and my passion. Good job, Chris. <laughs> Did my uh, chat comments help you stay on track? <laughs> uh, I 
<laughs> that was awesome. So I'm going to invite Chris to put his contact information into the chat. And actually, all of you amazing Zoomers today, put your contact information into the chat and get to know each other, y'all. So the networking is a thing that I believe wholeheartedly in, especially with people who are walking the walk and you get to play in the sandbox with like this today in this community. So you hear beautiful words that move you and you get to know somebody, right? So um, Chris, please feel free to put anything into the chat that you'd like us to click on, that you'd like us to know. Any of you can do that today, and then later I'll remind you guys to save the chat. Lisa, I'll help you remind you remind me to remind them to save the chat, okay? <laughs> All right, you guys, next up to this amazing Breakthroughs microphone today is Safi Lynn. Safi, oh my goodness, you guys are in for a treat. Oh, you ready? So Laura, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Safi. I'm a me uh, medicine musician, vocal coach uh ceremony guide i put the course in the chat i would invite you to sing and move this energy that atlantis uh helped us move and for those on facebook it's easy we're gonna sing it a lot so you can catch on release your fear give in to the open door release your fear because we can't live there anymore y'all that's right oh Got your drum, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. You wait, I got I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is so fun. Listen, this is what it's all about. This is an older song. Let's see. Your resistance to love is what's holding me back. I feel myself slipping away. I'm afraid of your fear, implications of doubt. I don't know what else I can say. Don't know what else I can say. Say you need some more time just to figure it out. What exactly is time? If love is timeless and your heart is pure, why am I forced to follow this line? Release your fear, give in to the open door. Just a silly girl I see you trying to figure me out Well, I'm the one with no doubts No fears, no regrets I am living in the now Come on! Release your fear Give in to the open door Open door 
Yes, thank you for singing with me. <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. Oh my oh. goodness. Yes. <laughs> you guys, you gotta, you gotta unmute and, and do a little snapping and clapping. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Woo! <laughs> thank you. Clap for yourself. Thanks for singing. Stop Atlantis, me. can I tell them about the website? Mm -hmm. awesome. Do it. <laughs> so I just had a new website made for me by our own Atlantis Wolf. Woot woot. So yeah. click on that. Check it out. It's gorgeous. Um, she was extremely professional. Uh, everything back in an extremely reasonable time. Got the deadline earlier. And uh, just we all love her. She's amazing. <laughs> I'm on here and say thank you. Thank you for that amazing meditation. I totally had a white dragon come to me. And then that vision of the never ending story on the white dragon, it was just like fly. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so very powerful day. It's so wonderful to meet Sophie. you all. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you, <laughs> Safi. Oh my goodness. Um, beautiful. I got I had goosebumps that whole time. I like a goosebumps day, y'all. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys, if you are messaging me about the retreat, especially if you want Atlantis's bonuses, please, please, please send your email um to dragonmedicinewoman at gmail.com. Okay, because uh, she is the one that you need to move through versus the normal writer's retreat link, which is broken right now anyway. So, oh my gosh. Okay. Um, how could that be? Right. So please private message Atlantis right now. If you're hankering for one of those 20 seats where she's giving you all those beautiful extra gifts. And um, don't PayPal me. Somebody was asking about PayPaling. Don't pay me. You're still going to pay Brave Healer Productions. I'm not handling any money. Yeah. The link There's is the link a very special link and it's probably broken right now too <laughs> so but i still want you to email atlantis so she understands and she'll give you the the proper one okay um y'all this is called stand tall in love i'm tired of falling in love can't we stand tall in love dance in love be strong in love be balanced in love, breathe in love. And why is the worst love when we fall hard? If we're gonna fall at all, can't we fall easy, awake, aware, open with knee pads just in case, trip a little and catch ourselves on the railing? I wanna glide in love, slide in love, wiggle in love, waddle in love, revel in love and never settle for less love than i give in love but i go crazy in love hazy in love certifiably messy in love i forget in love blind myself in love break the promises i made to myself in love we do anything for love anything to be worthy of love anything to feel more sure of love we hit the curb in love fall so hard we paint the pavement in blood and skin reframe the pain to make it sound better and then we do it all over again i'm done falling in love it's time to joy ride in love play in love stay present in love state my truth in love time to be all of me in love, fearless, in love, risk it all, in love, hear the call, in love, and if along the way I happen to fall in love, oh well, I know how to stand back up tall, in love. So that's my little love poem for you guys today. <laughs> I love love too. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes. Thank you, thank you. Camille Miller. Are you still here with us? You are next up to the open mic. Are you still here? Is Camille still here, you guys? I don't see her. She ditched out of here. Okay, that means Pamela Pine. You got five minutes, girl. You ready? 
I am. And I want you to just stop me when five minutes is up because I don't know how long this takes to read. Okay, one so second. This, uh, I need to yeah. find you because I'm um, having a little scan issue here. Where? Are, oh, there you are. I see you. Okay. Let me get you up on this stage and get myself off of it. Okay. Um, so I've got you on the five minute timer. You want me to rudely interrupt you or what? What do you want? Okay. Just give, give me give me a few seconds to wrap up whatever I'm doing. But basically, Basically, my if you would is that okay, Laura? Yep, go for it. Yeah, okay. So basically, Pamela Pine, I'm a public health uh, development uh, internationally, uh, international public health and development uh, person who's been working primarily for the last 20 years on child sexual abuse prevention and mitigation. Writing a book with Laura called "Stop the Silence: Thriving After Child Sexual Abuse." Still doing the international stuff, and I'm an, also an artist, various medium. I've gotten into writing lately and I'm working on a book. I just want to read as much as I can and would love any reactions. It held your attention. It didn't hold your attention. Pretty cool. Not, you know, could use this. Okay. So um, I think this is going to be called this book. Um, I think, well, I don't know what it's going to be called. So I won't even go there. Um, on January 1st, 2020, the year that changed so much for Perse Persephone, who went by the name Percy, awoke with a start and anxiously looked around the room and then made sure the camera on her phone was covered. She wondered, am I still being watched? After all this time, am I still being watched? And decided she would probably be covering the camera on various types of electronic equipment for the rest of her life. Getting dressed and undressed, going to the bathroom. These were now and forever activities that had changed in her mind. This sensation, the reality of being watched so uncomfortable as it already had been, had taken on a much more ominous feeling over the past seven years. After making sure the camera was obscured, she laid back, closed her eyes, and thought about the dream that she woke with. She watched herself as she was getting on the metro to go to BWI Airport outside Washington, D.C. The day was gray and chilly, and initially, she didn't think she would be able to find a train to get her there, until the next day, but then she realized that wasn't right. It was leaving at 9 a.m. Then the train almost left without her baggage, and Percy got back on the train with the luggage, and but then got off again to speak to a man in a back room somewhere about the schedule. The train went off without her, but without her, but with her luggage. For some reason, she was not very concerned, thinking she could gather, she could get another train and meet the one that left with her bags. But the train people are very concerned and they call ahead to let someone know that the train is arriving with her baggage, but not her. Percy realized there are some concerns about luggage traveling alone without their owner, both because maybe people will be a bit unnerved to see unaccompanied baggage, but also because the luggage may be lost or stolen. Percy felt separated from what she was really trying to accomplish. And, and it was through her own doing. She needed to put the lost parts together and get to her destination in one piece. Now it was November, 1977. With one bag quickly packed with things Percy was not sure she needed, she fled to the airport from DC in a cab. She had taken longer flights, she thought, but this was up there with the rest, nearly a full day, about 17 hours. Walking swiftly, leaving untraceable dust in her wake, her neck uh, ached from searching left then right, evading shadows and dapple gongers, uh, gangers, sorry, and she just needed to be gone. There was no one there to see her off. There was her trip and her, this was her trip and her trip alone. In the recent years before, she had learned to embrace being alone, focusing on the what's next, which she unintendedly breathed out loud just now, wondering with some concern whether anyone had seen or overheard her whispering, whispered musings and might think she was a bit odd or crazy. Percy's journey, Percy's journey had already been far and away, originating from a small town in suburban New Jersey, to passing through college in upstate New York, where the women's lib movement had been in full swing, where there really had been no place for her at the table. Dreams and plans had shifted from the moment she arrived in that smallish upstate New, New York college town, 
both beautiful and green in springs with hot and humid summers and very cold winters. 30 seconds, girl. One art professor in the later years there after Percy had already tried on the pre-vet and English for majors asked, do you have any friends here? No, she said with a small crooked smile brought on by icy, uh, by irony or embarrassment, possibly both. It was perhaps the beginning of her solo flight. Awesome, Pam, thank you. Um, Pam, and just a reminder for everybody, you know, feel free to please drop any links, any contact information, anything that you'd like into the chat and you guys get to know each other. Um, Y'all, I feel so bummed out by the dumb retreat links being broken today. You know, there's no good time to do an overhaul on your website. There is no good time, especially if you have a company that's running on multiple live links and all of the things. So I'll say to y'all, if, if you know, you're itching to have a spot and you want to do a PayPal, I'm totally open to it, right? I'll let Atlantis know that you want one of the spots and we'll make that happen. So please let me know. Um, oh my goodness, the, the things we're going through with the website have been so super crazy. This is a website that's been in existence for two businesses worth of time. The URL has changed four times in my career <laughs> and the website is so old and it's so, you guys know, right? You're not, I know, y'all know, the business owners, they get it. So um, it just is what it is. And, we have Bradford Tilden up next to the Breakthroughs microphone. You ready? Uh, yeah, I've got my own little magic stopwatch here. Okay, perfect. Guide me. Thank First you. First of all, Laura, I used to go to open mics like every every Wednesday when I was a teenager. I write poetry. I do I do everything there. And and when I saw this, I was very excited. And I thank you for re inspiring me. And uh, Safihi, is that how you say your name? Thank you for inspiring me as well. And uh, Chris, everyone who's been on here has been amazing. And I had so many different options. Could, should I write a poem? Should I recite a poem? Should I play some music? One of the songs I've written. But I was guided to uh, give everyone a, an angelic blessing. Uh, one of the uh, things that I discovered I'm capable of is to channel angels and even archangels through my voice. And it's a very humbling experience and very powerful and sacred. And uh, it's an honor to be able to share this with anyone and certainly with a group of people such as, such as this. So um, I am a, I, I believe I'm an ambassador from the new earth. Uh, or I came incarnated here with mastery level wisdom about frequencies, crystals, gemstones, and sound and music. And I pulled that all together into my, my business, Crystal Music Healing. And I'm also a leading teacher of this extraordinary modality called Universal White Time Healing. And I had the great honor to be uh, able to write a chapter in the most recent bestseller uh, from Brave Healers Productions, the Energy Medicine Solution that Jacqueline Kane uh, curated. And I, just, I uh, shared my experience of being divinely guided uh, to connect with this amazing modality. So, uh, but the sound is something that I came here as a gift uh, to share. And I'm going, I hope that the, the music, uh, the sound setting works. So I'm going to just back up a bit. So I just like invite you to relax, to breathe, and to open your heart.
<laughs> I still get emotional when I, I'm in front of people who really see me. Um, thank you. Coming out of my, my shell and, and bearing my soul like that is, uh, it's always so powerful and palpable. Uh, the message there was we are all around, the angels are all around, the dragons are all around, all of these beings are all around and, and we, we invite them and we, we work with them and we ask for their help. They're just, they're just here. I always see this, they're like waiting, they're like, come on, ask me, ask me, what do you want? <laughs> and um, it's just so powerful. It was, it was beautiful, Bradburn. Left. It was so, <laughs> super beautiful, yes. Thank you. Uh, my stuff's on the chat, crystalmusichealing.com. I got a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Thank you very much. Laura. All right. Yeah. Put your, I know you put your info in earlier. You guys, again, um, wait till the end, save the chat, save it now. If you have to go though, and get to uh, people, we've got three more for the open mic and we need to squeeze them in here. And, um, you guys are just blowing me away today. Oh my goodness. Next up to the Breakthroughs microphone is Angel Roar. Angel, are you ready? I am ready. All right, let me get you up here. Give me a sec. All right, you got five minutes, girl. All right. Um, I am Angel Roar. I am a shamanic priestess and work with animal medicine. So Atlantis, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing today. Um, I was going to do a jaguar piece, but I'm going to honor our, our wolf sister today and read a little bit of the intro of my new book, Bites of Light. So I'm going to read, because I only have five minutes, I'm going to read the beginning and the very end. So there's some chunky stuff in the middle that hopefully you guys will stay tuned and catch later. The book is called Bites of Light, Leadership for the Evolving Entrepreneur by Angel Rohr. Stardust falls from the sky. I'm sitting on the moon. I hear a call from humanity. I know I must go soon. Growling as my paws land on earthen floor. Fur and claws, fangs and blood. Gaia welcomes me to the hood. Where are you? I see you up in blue. Howling the lonely call of the wolf. My soul calls out to you. Stillness, darkness, I must find my vision. Severing throats of those on a dark mission. Why am I here? What does my soul crave this time? My new furry soul basket lets out a small whine. As I look into the stars and ask for a sign, remember who you are, little one. This next trip to Earth, I promise, will be divine. Nestling in the den among my brethren, protected and held as I heal deep within. The sacred medicine, this, the sacred feminine, this is my medicine, the medicine of the wolf. I will a white wolf. Scrolling. In my Toltec shamanic apprenticeship, we spent years unraveling the concepts of power over versus power within and the subtleties of control and manipulation within relationships. This has been great medicine as the world experiences the shift of us humans leaning more into the divine feminine aspects of who we are and what that looks like. As I have experimented with these energies, it was clear that I was born with a generous capacity to feel and see subtle energies. However, those, ex those abilities were suppressed by my environment and lack of knowledge as a child. The divine masculine within prevailed, and I made my life, I, I made my way through life with a warrior's heart and chose leadership as my form of communication and community. As I dove deeper into the underworld and the shadow aspect of myself and my ancestral lineage, I surrendered to the goddess within, forgave myself for all the mistakes I had made along this journey, forgave those who harmed me and vowed to listen deeper to my soul, knowing there was more medicine within. Three years ago, I committed to the Ruiz family in an intense apprenticeship and gave them permission to train Willow. This feral aspect inside of me was full of fire, which I had no control over, and she needed puppy training. She had been hurt, abused, abandoned, and almost killed. She needed help, and I needed to heal her. I had to ask my warrior to put down her sword, surrender, forget all that I had known, and allow these healers to access and give me the experiences I needed to awaken the goddess within. Three men, what a concept. How did these men teach me the goddess way? 
energetic agility is the secret sauce to keeping authenticity, authenticity alive in modernized gender roles. Agility means you're skilled in both alpha and omega and can pivot between the two embodiments at will, choosing whichever best serves in the moment. Rather than seeing these aspects as something that is fixed, you see them as a dance which occurs moment to moment, each partner feeling into each situation and deciding which aspect to offer based on what would serve you best in the moment. To train yourself to move between Alpha and Omega takes practice, no doubt. And in my experience, I needed healers who could out Alpha me so that I could lean in and strengthen my goddess spiritual muscles knowing that I was safe and held. It takes advanced awareness, knowing which aspect you are occupying and what is needed within the relationship in question. This is where true authentic leadership is born. You can only teach to the level of what you embody on both sides. It takes practice to master the capacity to switch aspects on the fly. My wish for humanity is to understand this sacred dance of the divine feminine and masculine aspects within. Ignite the passion for oneness by diving into your own heart to discover you truly are the love of your life. You can create your own safety. Be your own warrior, as well as nurturing the creative oracle that births magic into this world. We are both. We house both and all things. As our energy connects to all things on this planet, because we are all one. As you start to embody these energies and heighten your awareness, humans that can match and dance this agile dance as well will start to show up in your world to play with. You're at five, Angel. That, my loves, is why we are here. <laughs> what good timing. I'm s- Good timing. I, uh, I hate to do it to you guys, Woo! especially one line in. But... We are going to be okay, people. We're going to make it. The ascension is real. Ascension is real. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my goodness. Awesome writing. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wonderful taste to um, an upcoming beautiful collaboration that we're working on you guys you know it's my passion these days reach out if you want a chapter i'm still looking for people all right put it yeah put some links well of course my link is broken but haha um annie mark (laughs) are you ready to roll girl i'm ready hello everybody it's great to see everybody i've been a minister for over 20 years and a a musician for uh 45 even more and uh, they're integrated and even more and more integrated now. I teach a ministerial training program with Jeremy Pager and Stephanie Urbina Jones through Freedom, Folk and Soul. I'm a grief counselor and a sacred witness session holder. I do weddings, baby blessings and funerals. And I love food shows and I wrote this song and it's called Recipe. I kind of used it like what goes into the recipe of a life. And um, I, I, stay muted but you can sing along the the chorus is I want you there and you could sing along because I love building community through music and connection this is called recipe is there a secret recipe for living life fully is there a magic potion to take me there I get caught up in a deep dark pit The ache, the pain just won't quit There is not much more that I can bear A tablespoon of gratitude To help me with my attitude But the world has gone so mad It makes me scared I let go of things I can't control I can't be bought, I can't be sold Keep my faith larger than my fears I take it day by day for now It's all mixed up, messed up anyhow I meet myself just where I am I got no clue what tomorrow brings No crystal ball predicting things All I know is that I want you there I want you there I want you there All I know is that I want you there Sing with me I want you there 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 I want
you there All I know is that I want you there I'll add some cups of kindness, yes, as part of the ingredients of a juicy, tasty life well lived. A pinch of pain, a touch of that sweet, salty, acid fat, be generous with the gifts I have to give. I take it day by day for now It's all mixed up, messed up Anyhow, I meet myself Just where I am I got no clue what tomorrow brings No crystal ball predicting things All I know is that I want you there Here we go I want you there I want you there all I know is that I want you there I want you there I want you there All I know is that I want you there All I know is that I want you there All I know, all I know, all I know is that I want you there Free to unmute and make some noise, you guys. Noisy. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank so you. awesome. Okay, put your links in. Like, you know, are we going to buy your record now or what? Like, come on, give it to us. <laughs> uh, that's so awesome. All right, you guys, last up in the breakthroughs show for the open mic is the goddess of haiku. Did you guys know that the goddess of haiku is here in the house today? Like if you have not heard this woman spit poetry, you are in for such a treat. And Kim B. Miller, I'm so happy that you are last up in our open mic lineup today. Wow, em, girl. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. My name is Kim B. Miller. I am Prince William County, Manassas, Manassas Park, Virginia, Poet Laureate Emerita. I'm the first African-American Poet Laureate for that region. I am the 2022 Haikuist of the Year DMV. I am the 2021 Haikuist of the Year DMV. All right, so let's get into these haikus. What's a haiku? 17 syllables, three lines. Traditional ones are only on nature. Non-traditional ones are called senryu. They could be on any subject. These are all non-traditional. In the poetry world, we don't make that distinction. We call everything haiku. Let's go, haiku. How many times do you have to fall before you stop tripping yourself? Haiku. Some of you are blaming yourself for being cut by broken people. Haiku. You are not a walking mistake. You're an undiscovered miracle. Haiku. Stop cutting people off because they didn't check on you when they were hurting. Wait, rewind, rewind. I got to hear that one one more time. No problem. Okay. Rewind. Stop cutting people off because they didn't check on you while they were hurting. Oh, girl. I had to unmute and make some noise for you on this one. <laughs> All right. Keep it going. I do. How much blood are you willing to lose to make those red flags you ignore? I could. You overbooked yourself and got mad at the people you said yes to. Haiku. 
turn your silence to distance. You're entertaining darkness like it's light. Haiku. Upgrade. I just did that one. Sorry. Haiku. No one imitates a loser, so your shadow will always be fall. I could. I could. Okay. I could. It's okay to be scared. Do it anyway. Scared people succeed too. I could. They thought they broke you, but you're a glow stick. They just exposed your life. Oh, that's one of my favorite ones. Do that one again. <laughs> Absolutely. I could. They thought they broke you, but you're a glow stick. They just exposed your light. And let's see what to end on. I think my time is coming close. Um, okay to end on this one, I like this one, so. And there's one behind me because sometimes you need a reminder. You're not always invite, not invited because you're not good enough. Sometimes you're great. J-Lo doesn't invite an opera singer to outsing her, okay? Come on, people. Haiku. You were looking for someone powerful. I just showed you your mirror. Oh my God, you're so awesome. Um, you guys, I know that Kim, there we go. She's got her info in the chat for you and she had, tell them the books, everything. You got 30 seconds left. Okay. Uh, my latest book is My Poetry is the Beauty You Overlook. It has 10 poems, 10 chemisms and 100 haiku. And uh, I have several other books. I was fortunate to be in volume two, self-healing and I believe that people limit themselves and focus on the wrong things. And uh, chemism that I'd like to leave you with, I don't know who this is for, but chemism, my sayings. Don't pull to them that they were wrong about you. Prove to yourself that you were right about you. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I could hear the glow stick one a thousand times. <laughs> I like these. Oh my gosh, Kim, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your powerful soul rocking poetry. <laughs> That's how it feels to me, you guys. All right. Get all that contact information into the chat now, y'all. And, um, you know, make friends with each other. Go support each other's social please like some pages and you can put those links in the chat and i'm inviting you to come back to the brave healer productions facebook business page okay that's brave healer productions on facebook and come to the live stream where this is and go ahead and put your info there too please because that's going to be a bigger audience for everybody that showed up and performed at our open mic today. Thank you. Gosh, what a, um, an amazing treat you all are. We're going to do this every month. I'm going to open up the open mic and we're going to have amazing guest speakers. And I think you all would agree with me. A breakthrough can happen in any small, medium or big ass way when you're open and you're awake to those possibilities you can have one in a small moment when somebody says a word you know shares a poem in just the right way oh my gosh i hope y'all felt it today i'm going to share one last one with y'all today it's called a deeper place i love a deeper place where smiles are frequent and laughter is diaphragmatic, where my eyes lock without shyness, speaking truths my voice can't. 
I love the melding place of our hug, warming more each lingering second, helping me lose my mind, find my body, slow time. I feel the invitation from the space between your jaw and your chest to bury my face and inhale. I love how you don't let go until I do, letting me in no rush to the end, giving my heart time to sink up and drop down a notch. I love being held by your calm, unfazed soul, forever shifting how I know the world and myself ensuring gratitude is always what's for breakfast and get this it's you who help me see warrior love is who i be as long as i stay awake feel the ache to live fiercely alive take me to that deeper place where the breath meets in a relaxed rise and fall together the still point of that rhythm pulling me in closer to everything that matters right now with you. So you guys, I hope you liked that little love poem. Um, I like I like love poems, you guys. My secret is that um, I spent a good amount of time writing erotica. Nobody has read that yet. That is my one last thing that isn't published. Oh my gosh, I just said that out loud. Okay, so yeah, so you might see some stuff coming up. And let's wrap this up today. Uh, we are going to have the 27th. Lisa's going to drop the link to register for all our 23 shows. When you register for the 23 shows, it's going to be the last Friday of the month. It's going to be 12 to 2. Every last Friday, Stephanie uh, Urbina Jones and Jeremy Pager are going to be doing a sacred journey breath work gift of a presentation on the 27th. You guys are not going to want to miss that. Okay. Um, you guys open mic people. Thank you. You were outstanding. You each gave us some beautiful gifts today. And to all of you today, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for walking your walk of awareness every day and for taking responsibility for how you show up in the world with your energy, your mindset, your aligned action. I'm so lucky to be able to play in the sandbox with you all every day. You are all amazing and badass, and I love you all so much. Lastly today, you guys, remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. See you guys on the next show.